Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day for Thursday, December the 22nd. Race number nine at Gulfstream Park. We're going one mile on the turf. It's a starter allowance race. $50,000 uh, is the starter price. Let's take a look at this field. And again, remember folks, head on over to the event page, the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com. Download those free Formulator Pass performances and move along with us. The number one is Marchant, and Marchant goes out for Tommy Albertrani. This is a horse that was gelded over the spring and has come back in much better form. An interesting sort of dilemma that you have as a handicapper. You look in the race that he broke his maiden at Delaware. It's come back awful. The horses that he faced that day just were not that good. Probably sort of contributed to the length and a quarter easily, you know, score in there. He comes back and runs in a really solid starter allowance at Belmont, and I thought he ran a winning race, couldn't quite get there, got run down to the very end. All things considered, I thought that was a very good effort. Draw a line through the most recent start over a wet dirt track. Uh, I think he's a major player in here. Just ever since Gelding, he has been uh, much more focused, much more professional. He's not a superstar, but that starter race at Belmont that you mentioned, I think is comparable to this race. Yes. You mentioned it was a live race. The winner actually came back to run third in a 1X with an 86 buyer speed figure. He got a great ride from Manny Franco, saving ground, but he did finish ahead of two next out winners, and he could get another ground-saving pace tracking trip from the inside under Joe Bravo. He's 4-1 to one on the line. He's a very logical contender and one I think you have to use in multis. So. Agreed. I think there's a group in here, three or four horses that you can look at and say they're logical. You've got to use them if you're playing the pick six, pick four, pick five, whatever it may be. The number two, Leonardo da Vinci is looking for a career renaissance after his most recent effort, which was a pace-pressing try on November. I'm on point today. Oh, no, baby. Pace-pressing try on November <laughs> the 5th. I think he went too fast, and I think he took too much pressure last time. Yeah, the most recent start isn't the one that at least has me intrigued, but I agree. He got hooked in that duel. I don't really know what the plan was. It just kind of felt like they went on with it and said, well, if it works, it works. If not, so be it. The run two back at Keeneland, it looked like he had a little bit of run, and it took a while for him to finally get a seam. He didn't really get allowed to be let loose, really, till the very end. I just don't think he's that far behind some of these horses, and he's going to be a giant price. Um, I'm a little bit intrigued. It was a decent field he was in against last time out at Churchill. That runner-up came back to buyer 81 when finishing third in a similar spot. And Michael Tomlinson sent out some live horses yeah. at this meet. Yeah, I would draw a line through that last race, and then sneaky good form. It seems he fits at this level. The three is McGav. Blinkers go off for Phil Gleaves. Historically, it's been a very good move for uh, Gleaves. The last time McGav raced without Blinkers, was three starts back, a rallying fourth behind a horse named Risk Whisper on the Wind, who in his next two starts fired 80 and 81. This is a solid enough horse. He likes Gulfstream. He likes the mile. But there really isn't anything spectacular about him. I think he fits very nicely at this star at this starter level, though. I, I think he fits in here. I just don't know if we're just going based on the morning line. You know, six to one, that doesn't really do much to get me excited or, or enticed. I think he's one that I would certainly be considering underneath, but I, I don't love him as far as a win candidate is concerned. In the many ways, the horse to beat is the number four, Galleon Mast, going out for trainer David Fox. This horse popped a 91 buyer speed figure last time out, really kicked it in gear late the last 70 yards to get up to win that race. Now, that race by far is the fastest race of his career. Is it an anomaly, or has this fairly lightly raced three-year-old found his niche? Uh, he might need a little bit of pace to set him up, but he's a very logical contender. I think he's going to get the pace that he needs to set him up. And really, you look at his four most recent turf starts, it seems like he's just been a different animal. Maybe the figs are a little bit light in some of them, but he just runs big race after big race. It's also nice to see, like you say, that most recent start, sure, he got that 91, but the horses that ran behind him, they've come back to run well. The runner-up came back with an 84, third place came back with an 87. The field he ran against two back was also a pretty solid field. I think he's way the horse to beat in here. I picked him second. This horse has just found a home on turf, and yeah. he has improved since switching back to the surface. The five what power, first time for trainer Jonathan Shepard, figures to be one of the pace horses. Uh, was on the lead last time out at Gulfstream West, and a non-winners of one other than optional claimer. Packed it in late to finish third. I couldn't find the excuse, and that race hasn't come back strong yet. Yeah, I was going to say, the field hasn't come back all that good, and you just look at his overall body of work. I don't really see a, a 
race on his page that makes him a true contender. What happened last time out with the number six, Tropicat? Because he improved by leaps and bounds. Maybe it was just simply start number three, the light came on and he figured it out. For me, I just think he was able to take advantage of a soft trip on the lead. You see that second quarter, 25 seconds, almost 25 and one, that's gonna benefit a pace horse particularly. You also look at the field that he ran against that day. That race hasn't come back very good at all. You look at it, I understand the second place finisher came back to earn a 77 buyer next out. And you, it's always nice to see big spread out fields. Makes you think someone did a little bit of running. I wonder if it was just this horse out on the lead, kind of walking the dog. I need him to prove it to me at what figures to be a shortest price. Because I think a lot of people will look and say, high profile connections, Ralph Nix down in South Florida, and he's lightly raced, maybe the ceiling is still there. I, I don't want to find out at a short number. The number seven, Blue Harbor, is the most accomplished horse in the race. He is the only three-time winner, and he was in a pretty good allowance last time out at Gulfstream West. That runner-up, metaphorically, is now a seven-time winner. Mm -hmm. He came back to win a 12-5 starter allowance with an 87 buyer speed figure. He does have back figs. He does have tactical speed. Again, he is the most prolific winner in the field. I don't think he has such an edge over these other horses, however, that I'd be willing to take much less than the seven to two on the line. That's kind of how I viewed him. Him. I, I kind of look at him and say, if I'm going to play anything as far as old, exotics are concerned, exacta, trifecta, superfecta, he's the most consistent horse in the race. He's going to come with his run, whether it's good enough or not, remains to be seen. I agree. I don't think he has some giant edge to put him on top. Eight is Shiny Badge. Now, Shiny Badge has raced twice at this level in Kentucky, basically carbon copies of yes. each other. Went to the front, pressed the pace, tired. Two back against condition claimers, he ran better. That makes me think that's his proper level and this might be too tough. Agree 100%. And you also look at it, his only victory came in gate to wire fashion. I kind of feel like at the end of the day, the way this pace also sets up, I think we're looking at exactly the same thing that he was doing in Kentucky at this level. Number nine, Awfully Brawn makes his turf debut for trainer Kelly Breen, but the Awfully Wilds are not prolific first time turf, only 6%. Hope, at least in this pedigree, is that the dam did win on the turf. But you look at some of these stats, un, un Kelly Breen esque. And you also just look at the post position draw with that short run into the first turn, temporary rails out. Their hand is forced. Paco's got to go, I think. Time for you to make your case with your selection <laughs> in race number nine at Gulfstream on Thursday. I like Leonardo da Vinci. I know at this point, you look at it on his page, there is no race that really stands out, but I feel like we talk about it. A little bit of dirtied up form. I'm going to make the argument three back, the good going didn't suit him. Two back was really the race that I look at and say, if he runs something close to that, He's got a puncher's chance in here, and he's going to be a giant price. Well, you paint a very compelling picture with Leonardo da Vinci. I'm going to take Marchant on top in here, the number one lightly race. Looks like he's finally running to his pedigree after being gelded. I think that race two starts back with that 83 buyer. If he runs that race, he should be there, and I'm hoping he trips out. Four to one on the morning line for my pick, 15 to one. On the morning line for Matt's top pick, the number two, you're going two, four, seven, one. I'm going one, four, six in our race of the day. And if you're playing the Thursday Gulfstream card from home, here's the deal. $100 worth of free bets, $100 sign up bonus, $25 free bet right off the bat. Everybody wants to play, as you can hear. <laughs> Try DRF bets risk free this winter at uh. drfbets.com slash free bet. Approximate post time for Rain at nine at Gulfstream on Thursday. 4.32 Eastern. Good luck.